Hi, welcome back to Shaving with Fuzzy. I'm Fuzzy. How y'all? Welcome to Saturday afternoon. Still hadn't got back to work. Things are looking up in that market. As um, long as the weather doesn't mess me up, I've got an interview on Monday that should pan into something. Keep me going if something better comes along. It's all right. But, uh, you know, I hadn't shaved, I think, since the last time I made a video. Uh, for no particular reason other than I have it. So, uh, you know, I can see that, uh, yeah, I can still grow a beard out. If I, uh, if I were to sow cheese, I still could. Now, it used to be more red. Actually, my hair was light, well, kind of a lighter brown, but my mustache, goatee, beard, everything was actually more of a red color. Don't know where that come from. But anyway, we're not gonna get back on that subject. So today we're gonna do something and uh, not so unusual for what we normally do. I did break out the brush scuttle today. I've already got it heating up. If you remember, my sister gave me this. It's Dirty Bird Pottery. I love this thing. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, this sits inside of a one that's got hot water in the bottom. It heats up the bowl in the top there. And you put your soap on the brush and you put it down in there and it keeps it warm for the shave. So what we're gonna do to start with is that we're gonna go ahead and get the lather on the brush. Now the soap today, took me a little while, I was thinking I wanted something vintage and I wanted something I probably hadn't used in a while. So what I came up with was Burma Shave. Burma Shave soap, and I keep it in this nice little stainless container that somebody gave me somewhere along the way. And I actually have a Burma Shave brush. And there were some Ever Ready brushes that look exactly the same, and probably made by the same people. But this one actually came out of a, a Burma Shave, either a Christmas set or one of the ones in the tin that I've had over the year. I've, Oh, I've given a bunch of those away. I think I got one left. But uh, I've got several cakes of the soap, though. And I've got one that's got a newer brush they put in it. And I don't know about that brush. I've never really opened it and looked at it. But uh, but anyway, Burma Shave. So I get every once in a while, you know, because I like shaving with vintage stuff. Kind of a nostalgia thing and whatever. And some people, some people are very quick to point out, well, you know, it's not really nostalgic with the Burma Shave because the original Burma Shave was a brushless cream. And then they went away and somebody bought the name and everything, was it Procter & Gamble maybe? I don't know. And brought it back as something completely different. So you're not really shaving with the vintage. Well, this is true. However, since they don't make the soap anymore, and since it has been more than a couple of minutes since they made the soap, Burma Shave has kind of got that vintage status to it now on its own, even though it is not what the original was. And I do know it's not what the original was. The original was a brushless cream in a jar. All the little catchy sayings on the side of the road and stuff, that wasn't with this soap. That's my understanding anyway. If I'm wrong, someone feel free to uh, sling it by me. And maybe after they brought it back, then they went back to the signs or something like that. But I think originally the advertising signs, I'm pretty sure that was for the brushless cream. There's a lot of people out there with a lot of knowledge, and if I'm wrong about that, somebody let me know. All right, so there we got the soap all loaded up. Burma Shave is not a hard soap to lather, not a hard soap to use. We're gonna drop it right down into our brush scuttle so it stays nice and warm. Actually, it'll get warmer, because even though I'm using warm water in the sink, as you're working it up and everything, it's constantly cooling off. So uh, for a razor today, we're gonna break out our favorite Jim Jr. bar. And this is my favorite simply because it was the first one I have and it was given to me by De uh, Dave Irving. And uh, you may remember he started the original safety, which I took over. And then from there it went to the original safety too. And since that site didn't work out because they wanted to charge us way too much money and they wouldn't let us just take our database and move. It was a free, free place. Now you say, well, it's free. So, uh, how did they charge you too much money? There's no such thing as a free lunch, boys and girls. Don't believe it. So their gimmick is they start charging you for storage space for pictures. They charge you to have a custom domain name attached just to have it attached. You still got to pay extra to have the domain name, which was fine. I ain't a problem with that. But when they started charging for storage space, it got to be astronomical because uh, we use a lot of pictures on Toast. So everybody got to using third-party posting sites, which was great, it really was, until one of those sites does something funky like Photo Bucket did a while back, and then you lose all your pictures, and then you got all these pictures in there that don't have no pictures attached. Anyway, so that's why we went to the place where now we have unlimited pictures for what we pay, and uh, or what I pay, technically, and it's not really all that expensive. 
and it works really good but i digress i always digress when it comes to toast because you know that's my pet thing anyway my favorite one plain handle on it it's got you know plate wear use wear still holds the blade nice and tight it is a junior bar so it has the bar on it uh i've already loaded the blade in and i think i've already checked to make sure the blade was all lined up if not we're going to do it again because you want to be sure about that now i caught a little flack here a while back also because i made the statement that people were talking about they were building the newer razors and they were protecting the ends of the blades on them and i got to thinking well you know that's not particularly necessary and to prove that, I've got a G model here. This is a, a Schick G that's had the guard cut off of it, and the ends are open. Shaves just great. And so I said, oh, well, you said you didn't need that. And, you know, some people. I'll argue just to argue. But generally when I'm arguing, I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. Some people just, you know, don't. The thing about it is, if you have one of these and the blade's sticking out of the stop, it's going to scratch you because that means the blade's not straight and it's just not. If you have a razor and the ends of the blades are sticking out, that was one of the reasons they said the new stuff is better because it protects the end of the blade and it's all covered and yada, yada, yada. It's like horse feathers. It does not make it any better. It just makes it new. Anyway. Neither here nor there on that. All right. So, on to the shave here. Got our nice warm water here in the basin. And uh, so I did that little live thing to show off the, the uh, G3 set. And I was surprised that as many people as it did just picked up on it and jumped in. It wasn't advertised or anything. I didn't even think about that. I was just trying to get the video posted. I had made a video on my computer and I'm not the world's greatest and I haven't used that before and I couldn't find that video. I know it was on the computer. I'm sure it was saved. I said, the heck with it, I'll do it again, but this time I'll record it on YouTube. And that way I don't have to worry about finding a video to upload. Well, that's live, and I was surprised how many people jumped on. So we're going to do that again, only with notice. So here's what we're going to do for that, just to give a preview, is that uh, we're going to do a camp shave. And I may even put me a little table outside the front here and... I don't know, it's kind of cold right now to do that. But anyway, we're going to, I'm going to use like I would at camp. I'm going to get my camp bear out. I'm going to get my camp bowl out. I'm going to get one of my travel sets. And we're going to do a camp shave, cold water camp shave. And uh, we're going to do that live. Uh, I tell you what, if y'all want to see a particular razor on that, holler at me and let me know what you want. It doesn't have to be an SCA injector. Uh, you know, I've got shave S. I've got those two-sided thingies. As long as you don't pick a cart razor, I'll play along probably, but uh, I just, you know, I'm not going to say I would never use cart garbage. I'm really not going to say that, but man, I don't know what it would, I don't know what would cause me to have to. Can't get my head around that idea with the cart garbage. All right, <clears throat> so that's going to be a future shave. So here we go. We got the nice warm Burma shave lather there. It's been sitting in our brush scuttle. Thanks again to my sister for getting that to me. She heard me mention it on a video that I wanted one because I've got the regular scuttle and we're probably, we're going to use that within the next couple of days also. And uh, just to drop more water in this soap, I got more whiskers than I normally have. And uh, we're going to use the regular scuttle here in the next couple of days too. It's nice and cool outside. Well, we're gonna make that happen, but for today we're just using the brush scuttle and that'll keep it, keep the brush uh, warm, the lather warm between the shaves. So here we go. Good old Jim Jr. Bar. Now a lot of people tell you about how mild these are, how mild they feel. Maybe they're very efficient. These old lather catchers, if you don't have one, you need one. If you're a single edge guy, I think there's a law that requires it. But uh, they're just some really, really wonderful razors. They could have stopped making razors with these and the world would still be a good place. I realized that Gillette won the uh, marketing war. He did. No doubt he was a, he was a uh, King Gillette, was a King marketer. So he won them. But not just because the razors are any, any less efficient or anything. If anybody tells you they just can't get a good shave out of a single edge razor, trust me, it ain't the razor's fault, boys and girls. It is not the razor's fault. All righty. 
love these. Land of Catcher Shades. We're going to have a whole sink full of hair trimmings after this. All right. Get down under that hairline there, that jawline. And remember, always know what way your beard growth goes. Mine, uh, I'm going with the grain going this way till I get right up here, then I got to go the other way. Or I'm going to be going straight against the grain. I don't like going against the grain. I can. It's definitely possible. <clears throat> and I understand some people want that extra smooth shave. I've said it a million times. If you're new to my videos, maybe you haven't heard me say it. BBS is a myth. You can get it. I can do it. I can take the time. Two hours later, I'm back at sandpaper anyway. Why bother? Nobody's going to walk up and pat you on the face to see how close your shave is. Not but once, maybe. People who watched my videos knew that was coming, by the way. All right. Well, this also gives me a chance... One of the side things about growing a beard, it gives me a chance to reshape my goatee a little bit. I had some, it's like trimming your sideburns. Sometimes you keep going a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and all of a sudden you got a really narrow goatee. And uh, if you keep trimming the sideburns, after a while they end up on top of your head. So always look straight ahead when you're finding the line for your sideburns so that you get them even. And then every once in a while, you can just uh, grow your beard out a little bit and get your goatee back in shape. It's not a bad idea. All right. Well, looky there. Now let's go back and look and see what we can do about trimming up a little bit. I know I got a little too wide on this side. Come back in a little bit on this side. I think that's going to look all right. So let's look at this. I don't normally uh, wipe off after the first pass, but I want you to see how good a job these old lally catchers do. And I don't know how many days growth that was. was. It was several. But look at there. See the difference already? That's just with the first pass when I'm sitting here. I see I left a little bit right there in front of that ear, and it's probably a little bit in front of this ear. That's one of those places I have to use a touch-up a good bit because that's the way I am. But, man. Just in one pass, look how good we've done. With a razor that's, uh, you know, it's been around a while. It really has. But, uh, man, it's just uh, wonderful. This is about a, a third use blade, a treat carbon steel blade. Some people like the stainless blades, I understand. I don't. Do you get as many shades out of a carbon steel blade as you do a stainless blade? I've been told no. Now, I'm saying I've been told because I don't count shades. I don't have a clue. I use a blade until it tells me it's not wanting to be used anymore. And a lot of times I've got two or three blades going. Right now I looked over on top of my, uh, I've got a uh, cigar, uh, not cigar. I've got a pipe rack that I use to store razors, my rotation razors in the bathroom here. And then in the center of it, it's got the humidor jar, and I keep Q-tips in there. Well, on top of that, I keep blades. And uh, I just looked over and noticed that uh, that blade's pretty nasty looking now. It'll go into the bin. I had one that I opened, and that may be it. That may have been the one I opened a while back, and it already was a little stained, but it wasn't down into the blade, and it shaved fine. Uh, bathroom is a humid place. You don't want to leave carbon steel blades in a humid place. So it is best to store them somewhere else. Those that sit on there, you know, I use them, and... And then I put them over to go in another razor, and sometimes they get used, and sometimes they get chunks. So I don't know really how many shaves I get out of a blade. I don't care enough about it to do a test like some people. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with people doing that. That's not one of my cranky points. But uh, it's just not me. Stainless steel blades are, to me, rough on the first couple of shaves. And I know there's people that hand strop them and cork them and all this kind of stuff. And... Blah. Just blah. Carbon steel is smooth all throughout the shades. And the thing that, uh, and Brian over at Toast points this out quite regularly, with one of them two-sided thingy blades, when it starts to go dull, it'll start grabbing and bite and bleed. When a uh, single-edge blade like this starts to go dull, it just quits working. Pretty much what happens. 
All right, done with that second pass. Ooh, that's a nice shake. Yeah, it's amazing how much better you feel. You know, obviously I'm not in the best of moods these days with everything going on with work and uh, a little bit of uncertainty. But uh, and it makes it worse when you really can't look back and say you did anything and it was your fault. But anyway, uh, get that collar out of the way. It, it's amazing how much a shave. You spend a little time on yourself, and you know, I just talk when I shave with y'all. Got a good cup of coffee going. If you're wondering, and some people do wonder, it's Cafe Bustello, just straight espresso ground Cafe Bustello. I don't do it in espresso, I just use it in a regular drip pot with a filter. And uh, if you're afraid of a little bit of a muddy pot, you know, have a little mud body pot, have no few grounds down in there, you might not like it. I'm not worried about that. A few grounds in the coffee. Just adds a little character. I've never had a problem with a few grounds floating around in the coffee. Using stovetop percolators, or especially when you go camping and you got the old percolator and you got it sitting on the side of the fire because you're basically just boiling the water and letting it perk, you're going to get some grounds that way. And everybody goes, Ooh. let me tell you a little secret. When it gets through brewing, give it a second to second to set. And then, you know, before you start pouring it, you want to take the guts out of it anyway. Well, when you do that, take your little cool water in your hand and dribble it on the top. It breaks the surface tension, I've been told, and it lets the grounds drop. So if you sprinkle your little cool water on and then give it a little time uh, before you start pouring out of it, I mean, the water is boiling hot. You might want to let it cool down just a little anyway. Uh, but if you do that, you'll get most of the grounds to sink to the bottom, if that really bothers you. All right, so we're going to be sure we clean up under here like we normally do over here. It was actually pretty good. That second round, I, I got pretty close while I was talking. Goatee feels good. Oh, got a little spot on the goatee we need to trim up. That's the thing about the witch hazel. My sister said in a comment the other day, my brother-in-law didn't like the witch hazel, so I will have a couple of free bottles of witch hazel when I ever get over there. I'm going to do that soon, too, by the way, sis. Get over and see y'all. So anyway, there we go. A Jim Jr. bar and uh, I think this is about a 1910 model as I remember correctly now to be honest with you I'm a little bit ashamed but I'd have to go look at it to be sure of the date and I just don't remember stuff like I used to and uh, but I've got ways of looking it up well fuzzy you've had that thing for 10 years yeah, yeah. I had it longer than 10 years, actually. I probably had it closer to 15 years. But anyway, however long I've had it, it uh, I don't remember everything. I'm not going to act like I do. So let's do a little old guy today. I was looking around trying to figure out how old guy I wanted to go. And, you know, the original here, the mini skin bracer, and as far as sense go, that's as pretty much as old guy as you can get. I, I'm not sure... I realize there's root and aquavella and old spice and all that kind of good stuff, and I don't know what's been around longer. That's not what I'm alluding to. I'm talking about old guy scent. It don't get much more old guy scent than skin bracer. And, of course, that's what I'm generally shooting for, so uh, I'm okay with it. Well, there we go. Look at that. So I wish I could do a side-by-side, -side, and I could. I could edit videos. I could do it. I don't want to. I just I, I, I just don't want to go back and edit videos so you don't get to see the before and after. You saw the before at the start of the film. There's the after. No irritation. Great shave. Didn't have to work overly hard at it. It's a mild razor. I can't use that because it ain't going to work on my whiskers. Horse feathers. All right. So there you go. Here we go again. I've said the things I usually say. And, uh, you know, nothing else going on. That's it. Y'all have a great day. Stay warm. A lot of the country here is cold, I know. Uh, I've got a buddy that I talked with in Sydney, and it's quite warm down there. He took the dog to the beach yesterday. But uh, around here, it is still it's getting cooler. Next couple of days are going to be real cold. By Monday, they're expecting some really, really uh, cold weather, maybe some freezing rain type stuff. So be careful if you're in part of the world where you're getting that. Texas, I saw a real big bad car wreck the other day in Texas. Everybody be careful. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, happy shades.